Hi, good evening. It's Monday, 16th of July, 2018. Welcome to Trade the Markets Profitably with Atme Markets, the open range breakout with and by our moderator and day trader, Jens Klatt. This is Berlin Office speaking right now, uh, but I'm just the introducer. So let's start and I will introduce you with a disclaimer. Forex and, tra Forex and CFD trading is leveraged trading and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. If you are a starter, Please start with a demo account and make yourself familiar with long trading, short trading, leverage trading, and your personal risk management. If you'd like to read the full business disclaimer, just visit one of our web pages, for example, atmarmarkets.com, and you will find everything written down there. Also, for example, the key information documents, the kits. If you like to trade Forex and CFDs, of course, you will get many benefits only with us. For example, one of our best sellers, DAX30, you see the user spread of just the dot points, but in July, we party, we celebrate the 30th anniversary of DAX, it's a birthday, and for that you will have 0 0.5 points during the main trading hours just for the DAX. Check all the other benefits out on admirmarkets.com. And of course, we like to inform you that the ESMA upcoming regulation is coming from 13th of July 2018, from Monday. Only the professional clients will get a high leverage up to 500. If you are a retail client, the maximum leverage you will get for Forex majors is 30. Check the differences out, and maybe you like to apply to the professional client status via that link what you see here you can do it and you get more information about all the differences between retail client and professional client on our webpage you will find also something about our regulatory background and of course how to contact us you can call us you can send us an email or visit youtube or facebook of course everything linked on admemarkets.com enough from my side now it's time for the second jens my name is jens Scharnowski, and now time for jens glatt hi good evening jens now it's your turn. Yeah, hello and good evening also from my side. Um, one second, I'll just click, show you my screen. Um, yeah, thanks for having me here tonight. And um, or in case of Berlin tonight, probably you are listening from the US and it's probably yeah around noon right now. Um, and uh, yeah, so we want to have a look at um, one of the um, one of my most favorite strategies in fact and I've introduced it already in the morning um, the setup here was triggered and it now it's surprising for you you say in the morning what do you mean um, today sure we want to have a look at the S&P 500 here um, and how to to trade um, the open range setup here um, for the US equity markets in this case but we've um, adopted the strategy already um, based on the 30th anniversary of the DAX we've adopted it to the DAX and in the morning I've shown um, another approach trading this um, scenario here we could call it Asia breakout and here on the Euro Japanese yen um, so the thing is that I'm now I'm sure. Let's put it that way. Now I'm sure. Let's go through uh, the three steps first here. Um, for the S&P 500, we'll stress test this um, strategy then on Wednesday again. Um, there we have a webinar at 4 p.m. German time. So this is 3 p.m. London and half an hour after Wall Street opened at uh, in Germany 3.30, London 2.30. Um, and here we'll stress test the following setup in where under real market conditions even though you had already an impression uh, in the morning here in the real trading real day trading ideas I presented there um, and so what we'll do here is we'll make sure that you have the strategy the setup already um, available then you can write it down you can screenshot it whatever you can probably screenshot it and back test it yourself see if it works or not um, for you you'll be surprised it's in fact a very very simple approach which has some astonishing results over a time span of at least the last seven seven and a half eight years back test i will show to you a little later on and again you can adopt it to every other market and we'll adopt it to the euro japanese yen then in the morning unfortunately this this is the only only small thing which is not that nice um, the trade does not develop as we want to see it develop. So there is, yes, there has been um, um, the trigger found on the short, uh, on the long side. I'm sorry, on the long side in the morning. Um, and in fact, it was a very, very um, thin range here. We, we only saw a range of 22 pips, which is in fact very, very um, narrow. Um, not thin. I'm sorry, narrow, a narrow range. And um, 
yeah, right now we are drifting slightly lower. So we haven't been stopped out, which also shows that the overall trading range of today in Euro Japanese yen is only 30 pips. So market conditions are, well, not that great. In fact, um, breakout traders suffer some some problems right now. I count myself to be a breakout trader. So my overall performance for the last month here or this month. If you only take July, but also the, the last two weeks of June, we're in that great. It's not that I'm it, that it's killing me or something. Don't get me wrong, but um, it's always better or or n nicer to see your account growing instead of uh, slightly shrinking. And uh, the market conditions are. This is the thing. Um, they are typical for for this period of the year. So it's a vacation. Um, everyone is, 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 is on summer holiday, volatility is dropping, it's not only in equity markets but also in the in the FX markets and yeah, things are a little difficult then for breakout traders. Sometimes you're lucky, you, you catch um, a move here and then the market spikes into the take profit region but um, it's not uncommon then that the upcoming three days volatility drops again and it's not um, uncommon that that you're drifted out then of these trades and uh, none of the gains you made before um, uh, can be held into the account. Only thing you can do is trade the, the setup through, probably reduce the position size a little, but this is something we want to have a look at a little later on that. So first of all, let's have a look here at the three-step intraday trading strategy for the S&P. So the first step is we have to define um, an open range. And um, the open range is, um, in fact, called open range, but you can also call it Asia range. You can call it range for whichever market you're, you're looking at. In fact, um, for the S&P 500, but also for the DAX, for example, there are um, approaches where you can see that here um, uh, there can be uh, three ranges of the day, um, which do not necessarily need to be around the opening bell. In fact, even though you can also trade the opening um, range here um, um, and profitably. And um, the thing is, you have to define a range and then call it open range or call it Asia range or call it just range. Um, therefore, we look at the time span in the S&P 500 uh, between 3.30 to 4.15 p.m. Central European time. So this is German time. And uh, this is when, when Wall Street opens, if you want. So 3.30, this is when the opening bell is ringed. And uh, from here, you wait 45 minutes. We look at the 50-minute chart, which comes obvious when looking at the second step here. We look at the 50-minute chart um, on the exponential moving average 10 in this case. So we wait for the first three 50-minute candles to appear in the chart. And then we look at the high and the low of those three candles. Where was the highest point? Where was the lowest point? You have the high and low. You have the open range defined. And then you say, okay, now I trade the break of this range in direction of my identified advantage. The identified advantage um, is very simple. In fact, you trade above the EMA 10 on a 15-minute time frame. That means you're only trading breaks on the upside or you trade below. You only trade on the downside. The interesting thing is, therefore, we'll switch over to the chart and the price action to show you what would have happened, for example, in the DAX today to, to just show you that it's not necessarily the case that you're trading above the exponential moving average 10 here and trade um, um, then the breakout of this range on the upside. And some of you might have followed the price action um, over the last one month, weeks, and have seen that there have been times when the market just was, for example, sold aggressively. Uh, nevertheless, turned aggressively higher within minutes then, and, and we, we've got to see something we could yeah, probably define as a so-called V uh, formation. So it's, it's like a V in the chart, and the market pushes lower and then moves sharply up, or moves higher and then moves sharply lower. Sometimes it's because of a tweet, some uh, central bank announces whatever, Donald Trump says, hey, by the way, I've divorced from Melania and that's why the market goes up or down, whatever. Um, okay, that's, that's probably uh, not that correct, but, but you can imagine that there's currently at least a market environment in which um, 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 such V spikes on the up or on the downside can happen. And um, this could then correlate here 
with um, not being triggered, at least not, not at once, because the thing is now we can work with the so-called buy or sell limit, something I'll show to you a little later. So currently I'm just speaking, I'm just talking here, and, and you probably um, have trouble to, to really understand what I can right now see here um, in images in front of my eye, um, but you will clearly see clearly seen uh, in, in, the, in a few minutes from now because we only look at where we will look at the DAX then as an example but you can easily adopt it to every other market and then the third step is that you trade the break of the range in direction of the identified advantage meaning you're looking at the stop above respectively below the high low of the range and then you take the profit in case of the S&P setup here you take out the trade at 9 50 p.m. Central European time in fact um, we can already see an example of how the setup would have worked today. Um, so what you can see here is those thin lines, those two th red thin lines. Um, and by the way, I haven't traded the setup here uh, today. So um, um, it's, it's, it's not open here, uh, but you can see the trade there, which we'll have a look at later on, the trade from, uh, from the morning where here the Euro Japanese yen, obviously not moving in our direction, um, currently is yeah unfortunately dropping a little here. Yeah. Stop losses at 35.3, it's eight pips away. The thing is that uh, it seems as if um, there's no other choice than being stopped out. On the other hand, uh, have a look, currently the market only dropped 14 pips against us. So it's more like a completely erratic move sometimes, let's say. But let's, let's first of all focus here on the S&P 500 and the setup from today to have already an idea of how this works. So what you do is you take those three candles. So here it's 3.30, 3.45 and 4 German time, those three candles. It's a 50 minute candle, meaning if the third candle closes, closes it's um, um, 4.15. So then you take the high, you take the low of this um, time span. The high is obviously here. So this is the 3.30 candle. And the low is obviously, in fact, it's the same in 3.45 and 4 p.m. here. This is the low. And then you have the high and the low. We trade the, 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 um, uh, the, the blue line as the exponential moving average 10. We are obviously trading below this line here when trading in this candle. So we are triggered on the short side here in this candle. So let me put probably do it that way. Probably that makes it even more um, clear. So this is the candle. First tick is here at 2,797, 96, no, 97, yes. Um, and then you can see the market probably trades slightly higher and then is breaking to new lows and this is the moment when we are triggered on the short side. So when triggered here on the short side, we place our stop here above the highs and then we are in the trade and we now wait for 9.50 p.m. German time to happen. So it's uh, from now another three and a half hours and we take out the trade manually then. So we can't really intervene here uh, but only to wait until um, the clock ticks down to 9.50 p.m. German time, then you take out the trade manually. And do not work with a take profit lever or anything, you just trade this setup through and you do not intervene in any way here. So now some of you might probably say this, I can't believe that it works, um, if in fact it does. So this is now the strategy for the DAX, something we don't want to have a look at here today, but what I want to do in instead is use the DAX to show you once, uh, when a setup is not triggered. I probably, that makes sense then to look back at the setup from the DAX here. But first of all, let's have a look at the backtest result of this strategy for the S&P, because many of you will now sit in front of, your, of their screens, just shaking their heads and saying, no, this strategy will never ever work. And in fact, it does. So the backtest result here, you can see, is from November 2010, 15th of November 2010, till 16th of July 2017. Some of you might be surprised because um, where is the, the uh, um, last year here? Uh, why is the last year missing? Did the strategy did not perform well or something? Um, in fact, it performed okay. It wasn't such a great year. Some of you might recall that there were um, um, uh, also a period of very low volatility in the markets. But uh, the reason I took this snapshot here to show you the backtest result is a very simple one. It's, just, it's an anecdote. In fact, I, I'd like to, to tell all audiences I'm, I'm um, 
talking to here in terms of this or in regards to this setup. Um, I have this presentation with another um, a professional trader, um, a quantitative, purely quantitative trader. So he's 100% working with exponential, uh, I'm sorry, with expert advisors in his trading, so with automated trading strategies. And um, we were holding such a presentation together on trading strategies. And um, I had some trouble to get data together to, to really create a solid backtest result. I mean, I could have shown the forward result from my trading, but the thing is that usually, um, in my case, for example, I'm not trading this strategy uh, since 2010, but probably from 2013, 2014 onwards, I'm not sure. So there's still some, some years missing here and to make it really solid in my opinion. And then um, he said, well, I, I don't have the problem. I can run it in an, um, um, let's call it objective environment. So you can see that this is obviously Excel. And he programmed the strategy in Excel and was capable of then uploading the data here from November 10, 000, um, 2010 onwards until we held this presentation at the end of July, I think. And um, now the thing is that he never forwarded me um, his, his, his Excel sheet here, but what he did in fact was um, that, that he opened the chart, or respectively the Excel file during this presentation, and he had, that was a webinar, he had some trouble with his internet connection. And what I did was he already, the, the um, connection was already lost before. I just took a screenshot and after 10 seconds of this chart to appear on, on the screen, um, his, his uh, connection was lost again. And I never changed this, this uh, um, screenshot I took here, but I use it in this case for, for illustration purposes and to, to tell this, this uh, little anecdote here. So now let's come back to the, to the trading, the backtest result. Um, what does it show? Well, it perfectly illustrates that the strategy, even though it might seem uh, to be very, very rough, um, it's a highly profitable one. You can see the equity curve here going from the um, down right to the upper left. Well, obviously, it's a profitable strategy. Um, you can also spot here the win rate, which is, by the way, one of the main reasons why, even though it's a very, very simple trading approach, it's very difficult to trade for many out there. Um, you can easily say now, okay, cool, I, I just screenshotted um, uh, the, the three steps you ran us through here, and I can easily trade it then and, and, and be profitable trading the markets. In theory, the answer is yes. Um, but if you if you really try it that way, you will find out that it's very, very difficult to really trade this strategy. And that has to do with the hit rate here of only 47%. Um, there have been, in fact, several times now, several occasions when we traded this strategy. And by the way, again, I, I already said it at the beginning of, of the webinar, the current market conditions do not favor breakout trading at all. Um, so sometimes, again, you get lucky. Nevertheless, currently, volatility dries out, volume dries out. Um, there is the summer holiday break, probably volatility returns in August, September, but just imagine you start out trading the strategy now um, and, and you see one month of losing. I think it, it's okay even if you're only making, let's say, five trades and all of them are losers, which is, by the way, happening. Um, happened to me uh, two weeks ago with, with um, an approach in the ethics markets. It's no joke. I'm, I'm, I just lost from Monday till Friday. And uh, you just shake your head in disbelief and just think, okay, just only one trade, even though it's only a break-even trade, no chance. The market just took it away. <laughs> and, 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 and you're not happy about it at all, even though I keep on trading the strategy because I know it's a profitable approach. But I can imagine, um, based on my personal feelings, that many out there will probably just say, okay, the strategy does not work, let's move on, find another strategy, to start to trade it. Um, and this is something which goes hand in hand with a hit rate of only 47% here in this case. What you can show, in fact, with um, Monte Carlo simulations, for example, Bernoulli distributed Monte Carlo simulations, um, you can show that you easily run into a series of 10 to 15 losing trades. That's just normal from a mathematical standpoint. Um, and, and, and something uh, statisticians call variance. It's just part of the game. The same is true for winning trades. You, you also have 10 winners in a row. Um, and, and this is the next thing. If you start out right there, you probably will call me a guru. If, if someone is now listening to this, let's say in 2019, um, finding this video on YouTube, you're listening to that, saying, okay, let's try it, and then has 10 positive trades in a row, 
um, it does not mean that I'm a guru or something or that this is the holy grail of trading. It's only variance. It's just part of this strategy and you can't do anything about it. The same as you can't do anything about it if it runs into such a losing streak. It's just part of the game. Um, but, and this is the thing, if you keep on trading it over a very long period of time, seven years, you can see that it's obviously profitable. By the way, this is even more astounding, this result, because there has been no compounded uh, um, yield effect or something like this. Uh, compound, and compound interest, compound yield, compound interest, whatever. Um, there's no such effect, but it trades with a steady risk. And in this case, for example, 10,000 euro account, you risk 100 euro, 1% 1 per trade. And even if you trade the account up to here, for example, um, 20,000. So 100 is um, percentage you, you just made. And, and if you trade the account up to, to 20,000, 1% per trade is obviously um, 200 euros. So or in case of, of, of trading the account up 50%, you're up 15, oh, you're trading the account up to 15,000 euros, meaning it's 150 euros then in risk. But this is nothing you use here in this context, but you're trading with a steady risk. So running this backtest with a steady risk, which also means, by the way, that the uh, max drawdown you will um, have, you've seen here in this, um, in this, in this uh, strategy, so in this case it's 17%, is slower than that because it's uh, not working with, um, it, it's working with, with a 10,000 euro account. It's, in this case, for example, if you see this, this drop here, you can see that you're already up 8,000 euros. So trade the account up to, to, to um, 18,000. And if you then see the drop to 63, which goes hand in hand here with this drawdown of 70%, um, you can see that you have, in fact, to say, I'm working with an 18,000 euro account, see a 1,000 euro, 700 euro drop. And this is a max drawdown here of less than 10%. Uh, which is giving this um, an even more astounding and impressive character, what you see here at the backtest result. So really a highly profitable trading approach, even though market conditions have to be uh, adequate for this strategy, even though the profitability does obviously not come out of the hit rate, but it comes out of the so-called payoff ratio, which you can calculate with the average profit and divide it by the average loss, and then you come out at 1.31 to 1. If you multiply this in the formula around the expected value, you get a result here of eight cents per euro risk. Means nothing more than if you trade the strategy, and it doesn't matter if it's a winning or if it's a losing trade. Um, if you trade the strategy, you make on average eight cents per every euro risk. So for a 10,000 euro account, trading the strategy means you make on average per trade eight euros. And uh, that's where the profitability comes from, in fact. So this is the approach then for the for the S and P. Um, so now, before we start to have a look here, then at the at the Euro Japanese yen, let's now have a look at the Dax here. So you can also screenshot this. This is the approach, um, and you see that the open range obviously is defined at another um, time of the day. It has something to do with the fact that if you talk about the open range. In this case, um, the European market opening is different from the US market opening. So it's in the morning then here in Europe, and it's 8 a.m. till 9.05 a.m. German time. Um, we're not going into details now um, and then discussing why it's 9.05, for example. Um, in fact, it is a very simple um, reason. 9.05, it's 9 a.m. German time. This is when Xetra opens. Um, this is when the main volume pours into the market. 8 a.m. is when Eurex and the FTX open. So between 8 and 9 a.m., there's already trading taking place at the um, Eurex and the FTX, even though the main volume comes into the market at 9 a.m. Now, the thing is, if the main volume pours into the market at 9 a.m., and um, you usually get to see erratic moves, pushing um, the DAX sharply higher and lower. And this is happening within the first five minutes of trading. And then the market decides in which direction it wants to move. Um, and to not being caught here by a surprise move and a purely erratic move based on only volume pouring into the market, um, I say the first five minutes of trading, I just leave the DAX um, alone, leave it, make its moves ups and down, and then I position my order, or I place my order after after those first five minutes of trading. So then I identify the advantage, in this case based on a five minute chart, EMA 50, and then I trade the break as I do with the, with the S&P here. 
in direction of the identified advantage. In this case, by the way, working with the risk reward of one to two. So having a predefined um, um, uh, risk reward ratio. And now I show you um, why it's really difficult sometimes to, to then catch the market here um, when it breaks out, but it still trades below um, where we do not trade any short, uh, where we do not take any long trades in this case. So that's a level look here at the, oh, we have it here. So this is today, um, slightly different colors. So there you have those uh, pink lines. And this is the blue line, our trend identifier. Okay, by the way, you can, you can completely ignore um, the trading here taking place between, in this case, it's, we just have a look here. Yeah, you can completely ignore those times here between 12 to um, 7.59 German time. Uh, that has something to do with the liquidity providers from uh, Admiral here, external liquidity providers providing liquidity for the DAX and um, pricing the DAX already overnight. Um, this is having or giving, giving especially retail traders some, um, yeah, some, some safety, let's call it, because there is no such risk as an um, um, overnight gaps, for example. Uh, and it's also true for the liquidity providers who do not face this uh, problem here with overnight gaps, uh, because we're, we're still talking, even after the ESMA decision, by the way, of a leverage in case of the DAX of 20 to 1, um, which is quite high. And if you're caught on the wrong side of the trade here, um, it's, it's not only that you as the retail trader um, are fearing a gap higher or lower, depending on whether you're long or short, but it's also the liquidity provider. And the liquidity providers can um, aggressively reduce this risk. Aggressively is not the right word for this. Probably... Um, optimize their their liquidity providing here um, by by uh, giving giving the chance then to trade uh, the markets overnight also even though it's not to recommend because spreads are too wide here and um, if you compare it now let's have a look by the way this is really interesting look at the spread right here in the DAX um, at Admiral here you can see that the spread currently is 0 0.8 this is interesting because remember what uh, Jens Janowski just said, it's 0 0.5, which is in case, um, which is by the way the case, but the main trading hours are not there anymore. Main trading hours are between 9 to 5.30, uh, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. German time. This is when Xetra is open. Remember Xetra, that was why I um, said the first five minutes of trading. Um, and this is where the main liquidity is available, and this is where you get this current offering here at Admiral with 0 0.5. Um, point spread and after that um, this is just um, 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 yeah, I mean uh, we are still only talking about 0 .5, uh, 0 0.8 in this case so it widens but slightly widens let's say so let's come back to the uh, to the DAX and the setup here um, what can you see here you can see that uh, this is the open range which you can define then between 8 to 905 a.m. German time, and now you wonder, hey, didn't we trade the long side here, and didn't we uh, probably catch this move? No, unfortunately, we weren't capable of, of capitalizing on this move. The reason is simple. As you can see here, we traded below this blue line, and the moment we traded below this blue line, it means that we are not capable of taking this long setup here with the breakout on the long side. What you could, in fact, do is you could now say, I place a buy limit here after the market broke out here on the upside, and you could say a pullback towards these highs can be traded from the, lo from the long side then. This is something you could do, but you can also see the market never looked back here into this short squeeze, now finding strong resistance on the upside, 12,600 points, mainly due to the um, so-called small expiration at the Eurex um, on... Friday here. It's it's only small, but nevertheless, when looking at the um, open interest here of written calls, um, we don't want to get things over complicated here. It's very interesting to, to note why, why we have some trouble on the upside. You can see that there's a very strong resistance zone on the upside. Um, things are getting, in fact, really interesting. If we make it above 12,600, probably 12,650 points, this could lead market participants to um, have to hedge their exposure here, meaning they have to buy aggressively the DAX, which could then push the DAX aggressively higher. Um, and the fact that we can stabilize at least in distance to this region 
let's um, let's put it that way, tomorrow and the upcoming days till Friday are in fact really interesting. So market is very thin from a volume perspective and with this in mind here, um, and the, the, the nearer Friday um, comes, the higher the chance that there will be a very, very aggressive um, break on the upside and a very aggressive push on the upside, which could push the DAX easily 100 to 150 points higher within minutes probably. So it's a very interesting region to look at. But now let's have a look back here at the setup. And this is what we wanted to focus on here. So we break out, but we don't take the setup because we trade below this blue line. And even if we now work with the buy limit here, saying, okay, every pullback to this region, um, and if we can, by the way, stabilize then above the, the exponential moving average 50, which is also not the case. So this is another thing. If you place a limit order here, you won't take the limit order because it has something to do with the fact that we do not trade above this blue line. And this is our trend identifier. So today is no trade based on the setup here, but it has nothing to do with like, I don't know, I have fear to take the setup or something. No, it, it only has to do with the fact that market conditions do not give you the chance to enter the market. Um, yeah, so that's it around this setup and how it looks like if, if you do not take a trade. And now let's, let's have a look at the Euro Japanese Yen then and how to adopt this strategy for the Euro Japanese Yen. Um, some of you probably remember in the morning that was here uh, when, when the setup was triggered and now you can see there was no real follow through on the upside but in fact now the market drifts lower um, and this is by the way the most horrible if you, if you take this trade and this is the most horrible thing with what could happen you just see the trade bleeding out if you want and this is just yes he, you, you have the feeling okay let's just take the trade out um, but then on the other hand, you have to follow the rules which are strictly given here and you, you just can't take out the trade because there's then on the other hand a chance that probably the market will, for whatever reason, at least turn around and, and go out at break even. Sometimes it happens. Last oh, Two weeks ago, for example, um, the trade did exactly the same um, um, on a Monday and uh, I, was, I was then going to gym working out, returning to the desk in the evening and just saw that the trade was closed already before. It's usually closed 10 minutes before a Wall Street closes. So there's the setup here from a take profit perspective. If it does not hit the stop, respectively, the take profit, the limit on the upside is similar. And um, I, I just found out, I was positively surprised to see that the market pushed into the um, take profit region. Um, and I don't know for whatever reason, sometimes it just happens. And that's one of the reasons why you just have to follow the setup here too and shouldn't intervene in this case, even though it does not look that promising. So it's only seven pips to go. And into the evening, I have to say, things are, eh, <laughs> it doesn't look that promising again. Let's put it that way. But let's focus on the setup itself. Um, and here I've already prepared it. So we, we call it, but we don't call it the open range but we call it the Asia breakout in this context. And uh, we go through all these three steps here again. We went through them already in the morning, but let's go through them again here. Um, first of all, we have to define the range. And the, the range for the setup here is defined, in fact, between 03 till 09.59 a.m. German time. So this is when you um, define the range. So this is the, 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 the period and you can see it already here. So it's an hourly chart, by the way. Um, the hourly chart, it comes um, into play based on the advantage identification, something we'll do in step two. But here, first of all, look at these two blue lines. What you can see is here is the candle which marks the low width of this range, which is 131.35 in this case. And the second blue line here, it's uh, the high at 131.57. Okay, so let's put this probably here. So the range is 0 0.35, 131.57. So you can see here are the 22 pips. And then <clears throat> you identify the advantage on the uh, hourly chart in this case. So what you do is you take the EMA 11 on an hourly chart and you do the same as we did here, uh, as we did for the S&P. You say 
Euro JPY trades above long and Euro JPY trades below short. And then um, the setup, obviously, how to trade the setup um, and, and where to place the stop, where to take uh, place the trade, take profit. It is the same as for the um, as for the euro. I'm sorry, the S&P or the DAX, for example. So first of all, you place a buy stop in this case. So that was here in the morning. That was once the the range stood. That was uh, here at 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 um, this candle. Was it this candle? Ten, I think so. Yes. Yeah. So this is where the where the where the uh, buy stop was placed. That was here, obviously at thirty one point five. Yeah. So three five. No, five seven. That's right. So the stop was placed below the range. In case of the long setup, you can easily reverse that. By the way, if you trade the short side, if you trade below the EMA eleven, then you just reverse the entry short. In this case, this is where the stop now lies, while the stop is where the entry long here is placed. And then you have it here at three five. So obviously the risk is twenty two pips. And then now the question is: Okay, where do we place the target? <clears throat> and the target is placed at, so, well, let's put long thing short here, it's 1.7 R. What do I mean by that? Well, in fact, what we defined here as our risk is 1 R. And what we have to do now is we have to multiply this number with 1.7. So 1.7 multiplied with 22 is 37.4. Uh, something I can always say here. So this is the potential reward. Probably it's better to, to round this up to 38. Makes things easier to, to write it down. So that means you put those 38 here to this point. That is 131.95. So this is where the target can be found. So this is 1.7 R. And there we go. So um, that's that's in fact that's that's the setup. It's the same thing as for the um, S and P for the DAX, for example. Um, the hit rate can be found somewhere in the range around 45 to to 50 percent. You can already see here that it's obviously trading that we are trading with a positive expected value. The expected value is defined as the average gain. Moment, I'm sorry. Uh, one moment. Average gain multiplied with the hit rate and then you subtract the average loss multiplied with the loss rate and you can already see it here even if we work let's say with a um, um, with a hit rate let's do it that way with a hit rate of 45 percent again this is usually you can you can see it slightly above that so somewhere in the range of about 47 to 48 percent. You work with a hit rate of 45 percent. Uh, this is giving you then um, the following for the expected value. We shot it up here with EV. So the average gain is 1.7. We multiply this with 0 0.45 and then you subtract 1 multiplied with 0 0.55. And then you can calculate 1.7 with 45. This is, oh, it's correct, 765. And you subtract, and you can see this is highly profitable. What do I mean by that? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll just run an example, even though it's a purely um, 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 theoretical one, but it's 0 0.15. Uh, per trade, yeah, cents per trade, euro per euro risk. So what do I mean by that? Um, so even though it's purely hypothetical, okay, but but you can see that you can work with these numbers. This is, by the way, also something which is becoming even more important um, when it comes down to formulate um, 
an expected value what what or no what can you expect an expectancy for your trading it's not um uncommon that many many um newbies especially come out and say i want to be a millionaire within no time i deposit 1000 euros with my broker and now i start trading and become a millionaire within the next two months um and and then a disappointment hits once this target is not reached. I mean, it's very uh, speculative. That's something really you, you have to understand. And I think many probably will uh, will just um, smile now because they think hey, this is really unrealistic. But you can't imagine how many people out there really believe that and, and strongly believe that. But this is, again, really, really disappointing if it's then not not um, um, what they achieve within this time span and probably the start of a of a of a losing series because um, from a mental perspective um, it, they these people these traders these newbies can't align their expectancy with their trading um, so ten thousand euro account let's say and now let's have a look here at the expected value if if we say um, and we we do one trade per per day in fact that equals if you have 250 trading days a year um I can sum this up already we have 250 trades okay and if we say we risk one percent per trade that means that we are risking 100 euros um per trade okay and then with a positive expected value of 25 cents here uh, 21 Let's let's round this down to 21. That means that on average we make 21 euros per trade. 21 euros per trade can be expected. So 21 euro profit per trade can be expected. So that means that if you then do 250 trades and you multiply this with 21 euro per trade you can here take the trades out you just have 250 multiplied with 21 you get 5250 euro and this means you're making 52.5% pa because you're working with 10000 euro account so even though this is just purely theoretical, it's, it's, it's um, nothing to really rely on. And, but nevertheless, you can see that this approach, even though it's a very simple one, you can really expect to make solid yield here per annum if you trade this approach over and over again. Now the thing is, and this is something you will wonder, why is not everyone trading this? Again, very simple because the hit rate, we, we calculated this with a hit rate of 45%. By the way, you can also go down with a hit rate to 40%. It doesn't change anything. Well, it changes the overall profitability, yes, and, and you can't expect to make over 50% per year then from an from a expected value perspective. But the thing is, it still stays profitable. It stays profitable as long as the expected value of the strategy is positive. Um, but now again, the question, why, why does, is not everyone trading this approach then? Again, 45% hit rate. So you're wrong in more than half the cases. And this is something which goes against the ego of every trader, of every person out there. Um, there's a small anecdote I want to share with you now at the end of this webinar here um, from the so-called turtle traders. It was um, William Eckert and Richard Dennis, both um, highly successful uh, traders both covered in the uh, book um, Market Wizards from Jack Schwager. And um, so they were on a business trip. I'm not sure if both were on a business trip, but at least uh, one of them minimum saw someone uh, feeding turtles uh, in the streets of Singapore somewhere in the 1970s. And the question arose between those two buddies, uh, William Eckert and Richard Denners, is it possible to raise profitable traders as these guys here were raising um, 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 turtles. Is this possible? And um, so they, uh, they, they, they um, started out with their experiment here and they hired traders from around the world or at least from the US, I'm not sure. And they said, hey, join us, we make you profitable. And they gave them a trading system. Today, it's a simple approach. Um, I prepared for the next time, by the way, to give you the um, 
uh, um, uh, the, the, the um, a layout here. It's a so-called donkey and channel. Some of you probably have heard about it before. Probably some of you already have it uh, downloaded on their PC. If not, M MQL5 forum definitely offers it. So there's a high, high, low, low indicator or donkey and, um, and channel, whatever. There's definitely such an indicator out there. System is very simple. It says buy the break to a new 20 um, day high or sell the break to a new 20 day low. Very simple approach. Um, stop is placed accordingly based on a volatility approach, if I'm not mistaken. And then you trade the system uh, as long as the position is not stopped out. You just keep the position. That's uh, it's a it's a monster trend following approach and if you trade it in the right market uh, or under the right market conditions you make tons of money because you, you just trade the breakout if you get a good fill on this trade the market will run in your direction and you just have to to count the money if you want so a very very simple trading approach and um, in fact more than 90 percent of those traders traders hired by those two market wizards who were known to be highly prof profitable trader millionaires over and over and even that did not um result in in the in the in the people trading the system to just um trade the system and trust uh in the fact that those two traders were giving them their money and said to trade the system here um it this it did not work even though the system was so so simple so easy to trade and um, just imagine the following. So it, it's probably slightly, slightly um, easier than the one I presented to you. But also here, uh, this is also a setup which is which is very simple. Well, let's let's come back here to the DAX, or let's come back here to the S and P. Um, we will stress this again on Wednesday. Um, but look at this. I mean, it's it's simple. It's only three steps you follow through, and you just trade it. Um, but you will have really with the big difficulties traded because you have to build a high level of trust and a high level of confidence in really believing that the system will work and the work you have to put in to to build this um yeah let's call it a relationship with your trading strategy to believe in your trading strategy something which is underestimated heavily uh in the world out there people thinking well I'll just take the strategy i just copy paste it and that's it um, it's in fact more than that and uh, something you will definitely find out. We will first of all stress, stress test the strategy then on Wednesday. Um, that's it for mine. I wish you all the best. Have a nice evening um, and uh, I think Jens will now take over and uh, say goodbye to you too. That's it, at least from my end. So have a nice evening. Um, happy trading. And Thank you for you today, soon. Jens. If you'd like to see and view this again, a couple of hours later, it will be available on our YouTube channel. So maybe tomorrow, check our YouTube channel. And the next webinar in English is tomorrow. Tomorrow is another day. Real-time daily trade ideas, 11 o'clock German time, 12 o'clock Eastern European time, or 10 o'clock London time, wherever you are. It's our global webinar for the global. So check your local time zone and hope to see you also in other webinars. Greetings from Berlin office. Thank you, Jens Klatt. Bye-bye.